Once upon a time, in a space dimension known as the Antiverse, lay nine ant kingdoms of various sizes and temperaments. Some tender and delicate, others majestic and prolific, some modest and unoffensive, some blood-hungry, ravenous, and empire. But one night, an intruding mass of foreign visitors came flying into the skies of the Antiverse. These were termite royals, future kings and queens of the termite race, engaging in their annual mating flights. But having this sacred wedding in Antiverse territory was a death sentence. All the ant kingdoms would feast this night, even the eight-legged paupers waiting in the shadows of their silken favelas. The once promising termite kings and queens fell into the river waters of the Salva de Fuego, kingdom to the Fire Nation, a stinging fire ant colony. The termites became ant food. Termite kings and queens lost their lives in the Hacienda del Dorado, as the Golden Empire seized the termite monarchs to feast upon their meaty, naked bodies. But perhaps the bloodiest of scenes happened within the Shire, kingdom to the Black Panthers, a highly skilled tribe of Asian bullet ant hunters. And on this night, the ants managed to hunt down each and every single termite king and queen clamoring about their territories for their lives. Except for one chosen royal pair, who destiny chose to spare from the jaws of death. This newly betrothed pair of termite royals were sealed away in darkness, while a new kingdom would be created to provide this new termite king and queen a rich and fertile land so they could begin building their own army. And so, ladies and gentlemen, their story begins now. Welcome to the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. AC family, this is it. This episode was essentially almost four months in the making. For me, it was four excruciating long months of careful planning, experimentation, and hardest of all, secrecy. I was hoping most of you would forget about the pair of termites that I saved in our Ants vs Termites video, so that I could take the time needed to properly establish a termite farm. But as always, you guys proved once again that the AC family never forgets. You haven't posted anything about the termites. Please feature them as well. The termites intensify. I'd like to see the termites move in. Name them the terminators if they are the termites. Meanwhile, everyone just wants an update on the termites. I really hope it is the termites because I need termites in this family. Termites? Term it s? Even when asked in the community tab polls which colony you guys would like to see a video on for the week, many of you made termites an option. It got to the point where I had to do my best to hold back the termite mob with general posts to acknowledge their requests. But without revealing my secret plans to- We need the termites! <sighs> All right, AC family, I am pleased to say that the termite wait is finally over. What you will see in this video is how termite colonies form and just how vastly different they actually are from ants. And guys, the truth about their secret life will truly blow you away. I admittedly have never been able to keep a colony of termites in my life. So this was a huge journey of discovery for me too. And uncovering the truths about termites, I continually found myself saying, What? AC family, keep on watching until the end. So I have to be honest, termites were always on the bottom of the interesting list for me, as a fan of you social insects. No offense to the termite lovers out there, but even bee and wasp keeping seemed so much more interesting to me than keeping termites. I mean, compared to ants and other hymenopterans, termites seemed a bit boring. In ants, there are so many colors, shapes, ways of life. You have ants with bear traps on their face, ants that tend fungus gardens, ants that form water rafts, ants that can milk cows, even Dracula ants that suck the blood of their own young. We ant keepers love that ants emerge from their nests to forage in the open, to bring back food to the family. But termites? Well, though admittedly diverse, to me, all just seem to have that general appearance and lifestyle of fat, squishy gummy of an insect that never leave their edible home and munch on wood and plant matter all day. But AC family, little did I know, I would discover just how wrong I was and how, four months later, my perspective and surprisingly, 
fascination for termites would change drastically. So in the past, just for kicks, I attempted to raise a pair of king and queen termites by capturing them during a nuptial flight and placing them in an ant-style test tube setup with some soil, pieces of wood, and cardboard. To my surprise, the pair had eggs a few weeks later. But after that one time checking up on them, mysteriously, the pair completely died the very next day. And the only thing I could attribute it to was the light I used to get a better look at the termites. The light bulb wasn't too hot or too strong, but I deduced that perhaps the termite elates were somehow photosensitive, that perhaps once sealed in their claustral chamber, the pair could not be exposed to light. It was that day I blanketly dismissed termites as much too complicated to keep. But this time, I took a different approach. I chose to create a test tube setup again, but this time, I kept the termites wrapped and instead buried them, test tube setup and all, in a terrarium, in which I would place soils, rocks, peat, sphagnum moss, wood chips, decaying cardboard, and old paper, and a large piece of old driftwood. I kept this entire setup away in a closet for four months. And, lo and behold, AC family, this is what the terrarium looked like nearly four months later. Welcome to the Palace of Mounds. Now this attractive terrascape of wooden palisades and complex network of satellite nest stations is actually a combined designed effort between myself and our new growing termite colony. Now about the ants you see inside, just ignore them for now. I'll get to them in a moment. But let me explain how this all happened. After about the second month, to my utter delight, I began to notice small peculiar cavernous mounds protruding from the soil. It was confirmed. Our king and queen have been busy and successful. Now I didn't want these termite mounds to grow huge, and I absolutely knew they could. So before the mounds grew too big, I decided to try something neat and pluck these mounds out of the soil to place securely onto the main driftwood palisade. I wasn't sure if the termites, or even the king or queen, were in these budding mounds because I never saw any termites at this point. But I figured if there were termites in them, transplanting them might encourage the termites to start burrowing into the main driftwood, which was what I had initially hoped for, as opposed to some massive round mound I wouldn't be able to contain. But shortly after doing this, I began to notice discrete soil tunnels connecting these transplanted mounds. I would have missed them had I not looked carefully. The termites were definitely around, just hiding from me. But then one day, I discovered this. The soil tunnels were extending onto the glass. Oh boy. Now AC family, are you ready for this? Looking at the back of the terrarium, I checked to see if I could see inside the tunnels. And yes, visual access into the tunnel. But still no termites. Hmm. I decided to come back to check the tunnels in the night. And AC family, lo and behold, I finally got sight of my very first termite worker. I went ballistic. Look at it traveling through the soil tube. It was soon met with another termite worker. And another. I did some research and it turns out termite workers, unlike ants, are rarely found out in the open and do not forage unprotected. So they rely on these soil tunnels called shelter tubes to protect them from predators, especially their arch enemies, ants. So get this, these shelter tubes are made of soil and the termites own hardened feces. The soil fecal shelter tubes harden and also keep other competing organisms, like this miniature wood roach, out of their nest. I also was surprised to discover that these shelter tubes protect their sensitive bodies from light, which confirms why we rarely see termites foraging out in the open, and why my first termite pair died after light exposure. Turns out, the termites emerge at night to build these shelter tubes. And that gave me an idea. I decided to pluck one of the termite mounds out of the ground, this time at night. In AC family, that is when I finally got to meet them. Behold, members of our prolific termite colony. Aren't they awesome, AC family? I have never seen termites in a big group like this in real life before. So seeing them now like this was pretty unreal. Now, as we marvel at this section of the colony, let me share with you some of the mind-blowing things I learned about termites. 
prepare to be mind blown. Termites are eusocial insects that are classified in the infraorder Isoptera, which used to be its own order of insects, but recently got grouped under the order of, ready for it? Roaches. Yes. Phylogenetic studies indicate that termites evolved from close ancestors of cockroaches during the Jurassic or Triassic period, which means way before T-Rex and Triceratops walked the earth. Termites had already broken off from their cockroach ancestors to form their own lineage of insects. Today, scientists classify termites under the taxonomic order of cockroaches Blattodia. Isn't that crazy? Now there are about 3,106 species of termites discovered, with a few hundred more left to be named. You may notice the workers have different sizes. One major difference between ants and termites is their life cycle. So as you know, ants go from egg to larva to pupa to adult ant, right? But in termites, the metamorphosis is incomplete. They don't have a larval or pupal stage like ants, but rather simply go through a series of molts from egg to a nymph, as seen here, to adult worker, much like roaches do. What's more amazing is that unlike ants, which start off as eggs and eventually end up becoming a minor worker, a normal worker, a major worker, a queen or a male ant, termites start off as eggs, proceed to nymph stage, then molt to become a worker. But get this, can molt again and become a soldier, i.e. a major, or can molt and become a queen or king elate. Isn't that wild? Even ordinary workers can become soldiers or reproductives. Another huge difference between ants and termites is that, as you know, in ants, all workers are barren females, right? Well, in termites, are you ready for this? The workers are males and females. Yes, so each of these termite workers, including those soldiers, are either male or female, but barren, so they can't lay eggs. Unless, of course, any of the workers molt into reproductive queens later in their life. Isn't that wild? In the world of termites, there is no gender bias in numbers or function. Termites live a world of gender equality. Now here's another amazing thing that sets termites apart from ants. Unlike ants, where mating happens only once during a mating flight and the queen is left solo, to found her colony since the males die after mating. In termites, the male known as a king remains alive and pairs up with a queen, finds a spot underground to roost, then mates for life, which means the king and queen are inseparable, with the king constantly mating with his queen for her entire whopping lifespan of 30 to 50 years. They are allegedly the longest living insect. That beats the widowed single mother ant lifespan of max 30 years or less. This also makes termites some of the most monogamous organisms in the animal kingdom. And just when you thought it couldn't get any cooler? Unlike most ants, where if the queen dies, it means there is no more egg layer in the colony, so the colony fizzles and dies out. But, you guessed it, in termites, they've hacked that issue. If for any reason the queen or king were to die, the colony has a special team of replacement queens and kings, supplementary reproductives which can transform into primary reproductives once given the pheromonal signal. So if a king were to be taken away, the queen would produce a pheromone for one of the supplementary male elates to become the colony's new king and mate with her henceforth and vice versa. If the queen were to be killed, the king would release a pheromone giving rise to a supplementary female elate to become the colony's new queen. Isn't that insane? Termite monarchs have heirs to the throne, understudies waiting in the wings. But getting to the termite queen and king is generally hard, as their executive chamber, known as the queen cell, is highly guarded by soldiers. I have no idea where our queen and king termites are residing in the palace of mounds, but I hope, by some miracle, we one day get to see them. Now let's talk about diet. Termites mostly feed on dead plant material and cellulose, generally in the form of wood, leaf litter, soil, or animal dung. They have specialized symbionts in their gut which help them digest these very tough substances. Another thing I found interesting was that termite nymphs cannot feed themselves. These termite kids rely on adult worker termites to feed them via trophallaxis, i.e. mouth-to-mouth -mouth feeding. This mouth-to-mouth -mouth feeding also transfers some of that necessary microbiota in their gut into the nymph's gut, so they too can digest cellulose and other materials adult termites can eat. Speaking of which, 
I've also learned that termites here in the Philippines will eat plastic, rubber, and styrofoam. Unbelievable, right? I bet our termites will end up eating the synthetic plants I use to decorate the territories. By the way, I chose to use synthetic plants as opposed to real plants for this termite setup because first, plants need light to grow. And I was scared to shine light into this termite setup in fear of killing them again. But also, I figured the termites would eventually end up eating and killing the plants. At least these synthetic plants will keep green and crisp while they're being eaten. Now while we're out here, about these ants you see running around. It seems they came along with that main large driftwood piece, which I had actually brought in from outside. I counted at least three or four different ant species wandering our palace of mounds. But today these ants no longer exist in the territories. I believe I didn't have their queen, or they more likely died of starvation. Because you see, after I realized there were a growing population of termites in the terrarium, I decided to completely seal the enclosure so the termites would not escape and start turning my home into their palace. And I mean, there was no need to feed the termites. They had all their food in there already. So the ants either had to eat the termites or starve, which I believe they did. But eventually, the completely sealed enclosure started to fog up with condensation on the glass, which then led to a mold outbreak within the territories. As well as many casualties of drowned termites on the glass. So, after some time, I decided to leave the ventilation hole unplugged to dry out the lens a bit. Anyway, it didn't seem the termites were nimble enough to climb glass. And keeping track of their whereabouts in the kingdom was quite easy. I just had to make sure their shelter tubes weren't heading upward. Today, the termite colony seems to have progressed enormously. I see more and more of these shelter tubes every day growing out longer and longer from the various satellite nest stations, extending out like earthen fingers, completely unsupported by anything. The shelter tubes continue to form connections between satellite nests so the colony could move freely from nest to nest. These shelter tubes even extend downward into the soil. And thankfully, the termites don't seem too shy to burrow up to the glass where I can see and film them. As for the termites themselves, I am starting to see more and more termite workers emerging from their satellite nest mounds, particularly at night. I was curious about these growing mounds, which upon closer inspection were actually quite beautiful structures. And apparently these massive constructions are made of soil, digested material, and feces. Can you imagine living in a palace made from your own feces and barf? But as I was watching the termites moving about within the nest mounds caverns and chambers, I realized their home was vulnerable to possible mold outbreaks, and so I should really try to keep the lands a bit more on the drier side, lest the colony lose their wooden palaces to mold, or even lose their own lives to it. I truly love how termites are super easy to feed. No roaches, superworms, or sugar water needed. I just add a few pieces of wood, bark, dead leaves, or veggies once a month. No garbage pot to collect either. Talk about low maintenance pets, right? My dream is to hopefully one day catch a glimpse of our royal queen or king again. Perhaps moving through one of the shelter tubes. Or, if the termites end up creating a queen cell up next to the glass. That would be awesome. Crossing fingers, AC family. The queen shouldn't be too hard to spot, as her gaster is probably huge and sausage-like by now. Full of eggs. I have no doubt in my mind this termite colony will continue to grow quickly as the queen can reportedly produce up to 40,000 eggs a day. That's a lot of termites. Perhaps by then I should go ahead with my initial idea to raise these termites as a food source for my ants. I'm not sure, but for now, I've decided that these termites will be safe from becoming ant food. Because, well, I have a newfound outlook and respect for these incredible animals. Don't you? They're super unique and oh so cute. And AC family, I think you know what's next. This is a big one. What should we name this epic termite colony? Leave your name suggestions in the comments and I will choose my top five favorites for us to vote on in a future video. I look forward to see what's up ahead for these creatures that are one of mother nature's top detritivores and recyclers. So that concludes today's story of our termite kingdom. Whether you like ants or whether you like termites or both, the biggest thing I feel they have in common is that despite them both being notorious worldwide pests, it only takes a closer look into their secret lives to discover that they're in many ways some of the most impressive creatures on the planet.
AC family, thank you for watching. And it's Ant Love. Can't for wait for the termites. <laughs> Please do a video on them. They're so cool. <sighs>